probably wondering what kind of coop came <laughs> here. <laughs> I, one of the pleasures of writing historical fiction is the a good excuse to dress up. And so I just want you to, uh, this is a 17th century cloak, such as my heroine would have worn. And you could see she could be quite you know, secretive about her comings and goings. Um, but I'm going to take this off. Oh, I'm my handmaiden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, having, I had this gown made by a, a wonderful costume designer who, who did all the costumes for the movie Chicago. She's now working on costumes for the, a movie that will be made about Amelia Earhart and many luminous people, stars, and me. <laughs> so um, I showed her a, a, a portrait of Louise de la Valliere, who's the uh, heroine of my novel. And so she, you know, she created this dress from that portrait. And I'm going to step out here so you can. There. Um, the, um, just so you know, um, normally there'd be ringlets. I'm not, I'm, I might try to someday do ringlets, but not yet. <laughs> and my hair would be up in a bun, and I would have hair covering. Women did not wear hats, um, with one exception, and that was the king's cousin who wore huge hats. Hats were masculine wear, and long hair was masculine. So only when women were horseback riding would they wear their hair down and wear a hat, because this was the masculine, um, that's what they did. Uh, they rode in the masculine way. So when you see you know, the long flowing locks and the hat, that's a woman being rather um, you know, unusually masculine. So, and the gowns were, we've always assumed that um, because of the movies, that there was enormous cleavage shown on in this period. Well, it, in fact, that isn't the case. The women, I thought so too, because you see the portraits and the, the gowns are cut low, um, and they're uncovered, but they only were uncovered for portraits. In normal life, I saw an, always a book, a beautiful book of fans from the 17th century, and all of a sudden I said, what are these women wearing? They're all wearing coverings over their shoulders. And that was their normal wear. So they would always be covered, except for a portrait and for going to a ball. Um, so they weren't nearly as exposed as we think they were. In addition, their head was always covered with something. Um, also, it wasn't, the, the bosomy look wasn't considered sexy. It, that was what nursemaids look bosomy. A woman who was a consort or um, for the attraction of a man wouldn't want to look like a nursing mother. So the whole purpose of the corset, because you don't have a corset underneath, the corset was the body of the gown, was to make it look flat. So there you go. All <laughs> and I, I don't have my, um, I'm not wearing my little, what they call the bum roll. Um, you know how the gowns would stick out. Well, I finally discovered why they had that fashion, and that's because under all their skirts was where they hung their purse. <laughs> And uh, the only way to hide their purse was to have the, the skirts poofing out. So, you, you know, they could, I guess the bigger the poof, the bigger the purse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it is always an adventure finding out, you know, what it was like to move. For one thing, if I fall over in a dead faint, it's because I can hardly breathe in this purse. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, there is a scene in, in Mistress of the Sun where Petite, her name is Petite, Louise, it's her nickname, uh, she has to take off her boots where well, you can't bend over 
in these <laughs> gowns because the corset holds her. Anyway, it's a, a cute moment between her and the king. I, um, I don't know, has everybody seen this book? I, I received it about a week ago, and I think it's the most beautiful book I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, it's well known that the first book a writer receives that they published, you know, a book with their name on it, that that's a very special moment. And that was a very special moment for me. I, I live in a small town in northern Ontario, and I kept, I opened the book and I thought, oh my goodness, my novel with my name on it. And it was again a, a beautiful book. Um, and I, it was just too much to bear, so I hid it under the uh, magazines on the passenger seat. And I, I go to the grocery store and I get back in the car and I peek. <laughs> it was still there. And then I go to the drugstore and I get back in the car and I peek. <laughs> it was still there. So that was a moment I'll never forget. But I have to say that opening this book, you know, my husband was hovering in the kitchen and he found me the scissors to open the package and I slid it out and I was just couldn't believe it, how beautiful it was. So, Iris, where are you? Where is it? Iris is way at the back. Iris, could you stand up for these people? Iris is the um, vice president? President, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> of Harper Collins Canada and I've been fortunate enough to have Iris as the editor on every single <coughs> one of my books. This is uh, so this has been a, a labor of love for Iris and I together. For eight years I've been working on this book. Iris has been very patient. She, uh, a lot of editors would have um, not been so patient, but Iris knows I need a lot of time, and, and I did. Um, we have wonderful news today. Iris just, and Barbara, who is here, uh, are publicists, um, that it's, the book is 10th on the McLean's national bestseller list. So, that is very, very exciting.